So first and foremost, thank you all for joining us today. I want to welcome you all to this webinar, which is the Media Central Stream Working with Third Party Devices webinar. Um, you're uh, hopefully uh, watching this either in Zoom or on one of our social channels. Uh, and again, thank you for participating today. Mike, you can go to the next slide. So at the end of this webinar, you should have a good understanding of what Media Central Stream is, uh, what's new in Media Central Stream, as well as, most importantly, uh, some of the third party providers that we're now interoperable with uh, that we're gonna show you uh, in action today. And then last but not least, certainly uh, understand at least at a high level how to configure each one for doing contribution into Avid production environments. Today's agenda, we're gonna do introductions real quick. Uh, again, I'll cover very quickly what Media Central Stream is uh, and what's new, and then uh, briefly describe uh, the third party providers that are on the phone today. And then we'll do an overview of each one, which will be uh, uh, something that Mike will play through. And then we're gonna do a live demo and then we'll answer questions. So here's our panel. Um, we have uh, Eric Bolton on today. He's the VP of Strategic Accounts at Zixi. He's actually gonna join a little late because he's actually coming off another webinar, I believe. We have Jared Timmons, who is the SVP of Solutions at TVU Networks. Jared, thanks for being here today. We have John Landman, who's the Vice President of Sales here at Teradek. Um, we also have Martin Lindsay, who's the product manager for wireless and workflow solutions at Sony. We have Wayne Andrews, who's the senior product manager from Matrox. And then my name is Ray Thompson. I'm the senior director here at Avid uh, for senior, uh, for sorry, partner in industry marketing. And then we have Mike Shore, who is our senior solution specialist, who's the MVP of this webinar for sure. Um, and he's going to be doing the demo. Um, next slide, Mike. All right. So certainly, uh, you know, before the pandemic, we had uh, a significant amount of adoption happening in the market with IP solutions, right? For a variety of different reasons. Of course, it lowers costs. It allows you to basically provide uh, more coverage uh, by your teams with fewer resources. Um, and certainly there's uh, both economic and, and certainly operational benefits to adopting IP. Um, and so we've certainly seen that before the pandemic, but certainly as the pandemic wore on, um, we saw an acceleration in the use of IP really out of necessity. Um, Avid was watching this for a number of years. And we were already working on Media Central Stream prior to the pandemic happening. So it was somewhat uh, serendipitous that it was available at the time at which it was, which was earlier uh, this year. And so, uh, you know, we first went to market with both High Vision and Live View, um, and we implemented both SRT, which is an open source protocol, I'll talk about it in a minute, um, as well as RTMP uh, to really address the challenges that folks were having, which was primarily being able to ingest this growing number of IP sources into an Avid production environment and do so in a very seamless and easy way. And that was really uh, some of the main reasons why we wanted to, uh, to bring this out to market. Next, next slide. So certainly in the traditional news environment, right? We went from what you're seeing uh, on the screen, which is everybody in a brick and mortar facility, although certainly uh, the way in which consumers were uh, accessing content was changing everything further down the line in terms of both operations and economics uh, for that matter, in terms of how content was being uh, viewed by consumers, right? And so that had an impact certainly on acquisition, right? You had to now cover more stories. You also had to de uh, develop uh, new stories that were uh, primarily just for the digital platform. So you could drive eyeballs to that platform and monetize content in new and interesting ways. And Mike, if you hit the, the next button there. Um, so as resources sort of moved out um, during the pandemic and everybody started working from home, um, you know, IP certainly became one of the key components in which folks are relying on uh, to do things like uh, certainly news contribution. Um, and even though a lot of news organizations have returned to the office, um, they're still uh, sort of benefiting from the lessons learned throughout the pandemic uh, and the ways in which they're actually taking advantage of uh, certainly IP overall, right? Which the use of which has spiked. If you go to the next slide, Mike. There is also remote live production, right? Which is certainly benefiting uh, uh, from IP as well. It's uh, again, lowering the amount of resources you need that in the past, when you're doing things over satellite or fiber, required a lot more uh, folks on site in order to deliver an event. Um, now, folks have not only gained confidence in, in delivering content over sort of unmanaged networks like come out of the internet, um, but they've also uh, started to really embrace it, right? Because again, there's tons of both operational and economic benefits. And so this is another thing that we're enabling by certainly delivering Media Central Stream and doing so in a very open way. Next slide. So the challenge for folks, right, accelerate, uh, certainly the acceleration and the use of IP across the board, uh, accelerated even further by the pandemic, cover more with less, a growing number of sources to manage for media companies, certainly technically in the past been challenging to ingest uh, those, those streams in a very easy way. Um, and then you need to turn content around fast. So basically 
not only do you need to get the content in from a more uh, sources, but you also need to be able to turn that content around to an increasing number of platforms. And then for, for the folks downstream, right, you don't want to have to basically reinvent the wheel, right? You want people to be able to do what they're used to doing uh, and not necessarily have to change uh, a whole lot in order to be able to deliver content, right, across those platforms. And so uh, downstream, it was a big uh, thing to be able to say, you can still do what you always do. You're just accessing content the way you normally would. It's now just coming from a whole new set of sources. Next uh, slide. So we introduced Media Central Stream earlier in the year. This is a software only agnostic tool set that enables the uh, ingest of incoming IP streams. Um, we have implemented so far SRT and RTMP, uh, both open standards. Um, SRT is certainly uh, one of the ones that's been adopted by well over 500 companies nowadays uh, in encoders, decoders, players, you name it. Um, and so there's a whole bunch of flexibility that that affords. And that's part of what we're gonna actually demonstrate today. Um, you can run uh, this uh, as a software only solution, either on-prem or in the cloud. So we're enabling not just cloud-based workflows, which was certainly one of the key reasons as well for Avid to roll this out, but you can also do delivery into an on-prem environment as well. Next slide. New features, uh, we're about to release another version of Media Central Stream. Probably the biggest feature that I would mention uh, in here uh, from just a, a function perspective is the ability to write proxies. So for folks who are doing proxy-based workflows, you're now able to create a, uh, a higher res version as well as a proxy version at the same time, um, which is uh, pretty big in terms of being able to certainly enable a distributed workforce, right? Uh, to be able to access that content from anywhere on any device, anytime. So that, that's probably one of the bigger things. And then of course, the other big thing is uh, the growing number of, of, of companies that we're working with to enable contribution to happen from anywhere. And then again, again we're gonna talk about that in a moment. So if you go to the next slide. So as I mentioned, we uh, if you just hit the hit the button a couple times there, Mike. Um, so we we went to market with Live View and High Vision, um, and now we're introducing several others. So we're honored to have uh, both TVU uh, networks or TVU networks, excuse me, Sony, Teradek, Zixi, all now able to do contribution leveraging SRT or RTMP and deliver content into Media Central Stream. And then as you can see, uh, you can now write to Nexus, edit a growing file, and further downstream. Folks who are using Media Composer or Media Central Cloud UX can now basically do the same functions they were always doing in terms of editing content and delivering it to linear or digital platforms and do so from a growing number of IP feeds. So go to the next slide. Um, really quick, I just wanted to mention for folks who may not be familiar, you know, what is SRT? It's basically an open standard protocol. High Vision came up with this protocol uh, back around 2012-ish timeframe and they open sourced it not long after that. And since then it's been uh, adopted by a broad number of companies. Um, and basically this is providing uh, what you need in terms of the uh, ability to protect uh, a stream delivered over commodity internet and protecting that stream and delivering it reliably from point A to point B. And this is really what, uh, again, a lot of companies have really adopted uh, and made available as part of their overall solutions. So if we go to the next slide there, Mike. This is an example of kind of what it looks like and exactly what it's doing in terms of you know, managing jitter packet loss. Uh, you can see on the far right, even though it's probably a little jumpy, um, you know, just because it's Zoom, uh, you can see sort of the effect it has when delivering content over IP. Next slide. And then just again, the SRT Alliance, again, this was a big motivator for us in terms of adopting SRT initially in, in these early days of uh, Media Central Stream um, because of the fact that so many companies have adopted it and enabled SRT to be initiated from either an encoder, a camera, uh, certainly uh, mobile apps and so on, as well as on the receive side, uh, you know, introducing a lot of flexibility in terms of how you can not only manage incoming IP feeds, but also review those as net return or even uh, send those out, uh, you know, to folks who are looking to look at output suit. So a lot of, uh, a lot of flexibility. If you're not familiar with the SRT Alliance, go check out srtalliance.org. Next slide. All right, so key features, um, that, again, software only agnostic tool set. We're uh, again, uh, going out with SRT and RTMP. Um, we're enabling contribution from a number of different providers um, and we're enabling remote uh, workflows to happen. And that includes either contribution for news and sports or remote live production to happen. And that can be deployed either on-prem or in the cloud. Um, and while we're supporting SRT and RTMP today, the plan is to continue to add other commonly used protocols uh, to the service so that we can basically enable folks to do contribution with whatever protocol and devices that they're comfortable with so that we can make it easy to get content into an Avid production environment, whether that's on-prem or in the cloud, 
um, and hopefully uh, easily getting, getting it out as well and providing monitoring options as well. Next slide. So Media Central Stream, just to wrap it up before I hand it over to Mike to do the demo, um, is you know we're recording incoming streams over IP, we're agnostic tool set, we're bringing in uh, multiple different uh, IP streams, either via SRT or RTMP, and we're doing so with a growing number of providers who have adopted a lot of these open source protocols in order to enable their devices to do contribution into Avid production environments. And we're really thankful uh, to show some of those to you today. All right, so with that, Mike, I, I tried to burn through that as quickly as possible. Um, you know, we can now go ahead and play some of the videos. Okay, Martin, so let's talk about XDCAM Air and can you show us a little bit about basically how that works? Absolutely. So actually, I'm going to start with the 280 because the PXWZ 280 um, is, is very basic in terms of uh, we set the RTMP endpoints into that camera and then we just send you guys the stream and that's it. There's no need to interface with XD camera. Um, when we get to our shoulder mount cameras, again, this is where we need XD camera to take our QoS stream and send it to you guys out as an RTMP. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen here. This is very basic. I'm just going to show you one of our pages. It's called the, the live page here. Uh, we are see our transmitter at the top here, and we we see our available receivers at the bottom. Now, these receivers can be physical receivers that can receive this stream and and take them directly, uh, take the streams directly from the camera and output as SDI. Um, and then we also have one that I created here. It's called Avid Media Central Stream, and this is a virtual receiver that we have in the cloud that'll accept the QoS stream from Sony as a H.264 in this case, and it will then output that as RTMP into the Avid environment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, I'm just going to drag and drop, this is that, it's that easy, drag and drop my camera into this uh, virtual receiver here. And in a few seconds, what that'll do is it'll start the stream to to uh, to add it as RTMP. Now in here, it's, this takes a couple of seconds to negotiate the connection, but when we're waiting, I can show you here the, uh, the remote tab. So on the right side here, we also have the ability to do streaming control, remote control, and also see the GPS coordinates of where our camera is connected uh, and where our cameras were less, last connected as well. Uh, within the streaming, it's pretty straightforward. It shows you your connection. Right now I'm connected via my Wi-Fi network. Um, shows me my, my streaming status in terms of my bit rate, which right now is hovering around five megabits per second. And of course, that's a variable bit rate. So that'll go anywhere up to about nine megabits per second. Uh, and then we can adjust things like our delay. So our storage delay right here is, is set at 1.5 seconds. And we also have a very new uh, shorter delay at 0 0.7 seconds as well. And that's from the cloud to, sorry, from the camera directly to the cloud or from the camera directly to an SDI receiver. Um, then we have our remote tab here. So the remote tab is pretty neat in terms of the ability to uh, do some simple control on the camera, such as zoom, focus, gain, iris, shutter, and white balance controls. Uh, and then you can also have the ability to enable uh, record start and stop control on the camera if you wanted to remotely record media on that camera. Uh, and then the last one here is the GPS. So GPS will show you the location. You can do a view on map. It'll show you where you are in, in the map. So here's my X400 in Toronto. Um, and it'll show you other cameras that you have available and uh, it'll show you where they were last connected as well. So that's pretty neat. So uh, now that we've got that streaming, again, this is my camera in Toronto, uh, streaming to XD camera uh, and outputting as RTMP into the advert environment. Um, we can turn it over to, um, to Michael and Ray to, to explain how that's gonna be working with their environment. Perfect. So Mike, take it away. Uh, what happens next? So we now can receive that outbound stream from XDCAM Air. And by way of uh, explanation, we are passing through another vendor, the LTN Global Network, a great example of cross-vendor interoperability and uh, a great plug for open standards. So because these are open standards, RTMP and of course SRT, everybody does it the same way. The interop is easy. I, I build these routes, I receive them, I output them, it is painless. Uh, and I can explain then how I, I built that route and how Martin and I negotiated that in a sec. But now I will go here to my Media Central Stream application and I will uh, browse through my list of sources and I will pick that one. And that's his first camera. And then I will likewise pick this one. And that is the second camera as I mouse over. You can see it's negotiating the connection. Uh, there's the URL, the port, and boom. I am receiving now from Martin's house in Toronto on-prem. 
in a virtual machine, in the cloud, uh, either and or both. And then I can initiate a recording in Media Central Stream. I have a couple of preset templates defined here, and I'll go through more detail on this in a bit. But I basically hit the record button. Off I go. I'm now recording this feed, and I will set some crash record settings. So for example, you can see where this is done. If I change to this template, when I hit the crash record button on input two, it will invoke that template. So I'm now recording Martin's two cameras live as uh, DNX and XD cam respectively into my Nexus. And I am checking them in to my Cloud UX system. So as I look in my directory here, here are my two feeds. And there you go. A fine edit well capture growing asset. And here's Martin's first camera. That's great. And so for everyone down downstream, meaning everybody who's working on, say, Media Composer or accessing this content just like you are through Media Central Cloud UX, their workflow doesn't change. Exactly. And that's exactly the goal of MC Stream, regardless of the source of these feeds. And again, these are live feeds. Uh, I'm receiving these from Martin's house in Toronto uh, in our Burlington office. Again, it could easily be cloud based. And my edit experience remains the same. It does not matter how the media got to me as a user. I just need to use it and I need to use it now. So this is a fine edit wall capture asset that I'm getting seconds from acquisition in Toronto. That's amazing. So there you have it, everybody. Uh, Sony and Avid and a IP contribution workflow that you can now do from any Sony camera uh, that's capable. And same thing from any Avid Media Central Stream environment, which could be on-prem or in the cloud. I want to thank Martin for your time today, Martin. Thank you very much. It's been fantastic. And Michael, as always, great job. Thank you. Uh, and we'll go on to the next one. Okay, here we are with Jared Timmons from TVU Networks. Jared, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hey, Raymond, thanks for having me. My name is Jared Timmons. I run um, all of Solutions Globally for TVU. Um, really happy to be a part of this discussion and really, uh, really uh, excited about the partnership that we're building together with Avid. Yes, we are too, Jared. So why don't you tell everybody about TVU Networks and who you guys are, and then just talk a little bit about um, what you guys do. Thank you. So TVU Networks is 16 years in the broadcast industry, really formulated to solve um, all kinds of problems around aggregated cellular and getting um, diverse speeds and low bandwidth connections back to uh, production areas or to post-production areas for utilization. So we really cut our teeth on that technology uh, 16 years ago and our founder developed uh, IS Plus at that time. And since then, uh, especially since uh, right before COVID, we've really been focused on migrating all of our technology into modern cloud services. So we've taken all of our tool sets and embedded them into apps that can work on um, iPhones and, and Macs for different video capture um, capabilities, as well as the ability to enhance that technology with our field units and our packs uh, for, for distribution, and really have taken a microservices approach where we're building out all of the minimum viable functions that you need for cloud production, for distribution, and moving that into the cloud, not just because everyone's moving to the cloud, but because we can utilize the cloud to completely change workflows, enable business model experimentation amongst our clientele, and really it, it enables a next generation of a partnership with, with different vendors and different communities that I think are really exciting to our customers as we can start to tie together almost like we did best of breed style. And when I used to be in systems integration 15 years ago, I feel like it's a little bit of a renaissance of being able to take the best microservices, the best technology, and really a lower bar of being able to integrate with uh, with different partners. And that's what we're so excited about, what, uh, what we think we can bring to the table in new workflows, partnering with Avid as well. That's great. I mean, we are uh, really excited as well. And, and certainly what we've done together enables both contribution from any TVU network device out in the field to an on-prem or cloud environment. Um, so as you're mentioning cloud, right, it made me think of uh, the fact that that's now possible. Um, and certainly we have a number of customers moving to the cloud, but we certainly have still a ton of folks who are definitely working on-prem. So why don't you just talk a little bit about the devices themselves and more or less how you would actually go about sending content into an Avid production environment. Yeah, absolutely. So from our remote packs, 
uh, that you can uh, that you can utilize for cellular aggregation. We can output a multiple different kinds of feeds from those packs. You know, pretty much any streaming IP format. SRT is one of those formats, so we're able to. Um, output that to a cloud receiver and send that directly in a uh, cloud receiver or on-premise receiver and send that directly into uh, any Avid environment for processing and, um, uh, and uh, utilization. That's great. So we uh, are able to take SRT directly out of the device and we come right into Media Central via SRT where Avid puts it into several different Avid friendly formats and we check it into the production environment. So Mike, uh, are you actually receiving a stream right now? I am indeed. So let's go take a look at the TVU feed route. The connection point that Jared gave me just a few minutes ago, copied and pasted in the chat here, honestly, and I'm that easily and that quickly connected. Incredible. So Jared, one of the things that I know you guys offer is not just the devices out in the field, but you guys also can network uh, as well, right? You can send basically uh, IP video anywhere, either using a grid or, or some of the other tool sets you have. You want to just describe some of those? Yeah, I mean, I think from acquisition all the way out to distribution and in our, in our pipeline, we offer a lot of different environments where you can take your cell phone and be able to capture video to the highest level broadcast camera that's plugged into one of our packs. And then once we get it into our fabric, not only can we send out the signal via SRT and, and, and distribution to uh, to Avid's environment, but we can also connect that to anyone else who has a TVU receiver or cloud receiver via grid. And we can allow that, that uh, content to be discovered and utilized that way, whether it's file-based, whether it's a stream that we're sending out for, for live capture for a quick turnaround. There's so many different workflows that we believe both on-premise and the cloud, that this ability to connect these kinds of signals together with, with, with sophisticated monitoring and with the ability to have a point to multi-point distribution. So you could have multiple people working on the same feed simultaneously is, uh, is really interesting to us as customers start to do, I would say more hybrid workflows. A lot of people working from home, even as people return back to offices. And you guys have your own protocol, right? We do. We have a protocol called inverse statistical multiplexing or IS plus. Um, and that really allows us to do what we believe is a different way of, of gathering of gathering feeds from the field and acquisition and, and aggregated cellular as opposed to a bonded cellular. And basically the difference of that is, is that we are constantly recalibrating based on available bandwidth at the pack. So if you were utilizing multiple SIMs or you lost a SIM or you added an ethernet connection, you don't have to restart our environment to recalibrate that bandwidth. We're always looking at what's available and optimizing delivery based on that profile. And you guys can also run on pretty much any mobile device too, as well. Is that correct? That's correct. So yeah, we've been we we've uh, really think we've seen a, a user generated content revolution that's happened in the in really the past year, where people have become accustomed with to these workflows and just the quality that you're able to get out of the iPhone 12, the iPhone 13, and modern um, Android devices is is absolutely incredible. Doing full sporting events with gimbals and phones, all utilizing Wi-Fi and cellular. Um, and then bringing that back into our cloud production tool set, being able to add graphics, SCUDI triggers, closed captioning, and then disseminate that out to uh, any output or multiple outputs, including SRT directly into your environment as well. So whether it's a pack, whether it's our cloud production tool set, or whether it's through our point to multi-point uh, commodity internet distribution technology called Grid, any of these signals can easily get into your, uh, your post-production post workflows to be able to be utilized, renditioned, and distributed. That's great. And even as contributions happening off of your devices, right, coming into an Avid production environment, folks could actually be monitoring those incoming feeds on their mobile devices, right? That's correct. Or on our party line um, environment where everyone could be working in real time through our real time communication environment. So everyone could join a party line from multiple different locations. I could be sending that feedback. And while we're working on the production workflow, you could have teams working on quick turnaround packages that they're delivering back into the production domain um, at, at a very quick turn. And all that can be done with a low latency profile of around 250 milliseconds. That's amazing. Well, we're very excited uh, about this partnership, Jared. Uh, I want to thank you for taking the time today uh, to fill us in. Uh, I want everybody to know, too, this isn't the end of it. Uh, you know, this is just the beginning. Um, and so look for more news uh, coming soon uh, from Avid and TVU Networks. And uh, once again, Jared and Mike, thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Raymond. Take care. Okay, here we are with Teradek. And I want to welcome John Landman from Teradek. John, why don't you introduce yourself? 
Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, John Landman, as you got that right, um, from Teradek. Been around working here for the last 10 years. Um, one of the previous lives I had was working very, very closely with, with Avid for another 10 years and uh, happy to see that we've collided again. Excellent. Yeah, we are too. And uh, first and foremost, thank you for being here today. I think just real quick, I mean, I think everybody knows who Teradek is, but just in case there are those who are listening right now who aren't familiar with Teradek, do you mind just talking a little bit about the company and some of the products? Yeah, so, so Teradek has been around for over 10 years, making these very small devices called uh, cube encoders that I can, I can share with you here now. These are our cube encoders that are about as the size of uh, a packet of cards um, and take a feed from a camera and then send it up to the cloud to do many things with it. Um, once we take the feed from a, ca a camera and push it up to the cloud, we push it to a platform that we created called Core. Core has the ability to create different rooms as if uh, you were doing this in an, in, in an editing environment and send this directly to an Avid. We do this by creating an encrypted SRT feed directly from the encoder. Mike, why don't you tell me what you can, whether you can receive that feed? Absolutely, let's take a look. So I move to the MC Stream application. I route with uh, credentials and the URL that John gave me just a little bit ago. And there you go, the same feed that's hitting his cube encoder through the core to an Avid infrastructure. Now I'll begin a record job. So I will record that with a predefined template. And now we are recording. So we are decoding the feed, the encoded feed from the cube. We're decoding it to raw frames. We're re encoding it. In this case, is XDCAM 50, OP Atom, writing it to our Nexus and checking in to our production asset management system, as you can see here. That's excellent. And so, John, there's quite a few Teradex out there in the universe. What, what are we talking about? How many? <laughs> I think at last count, we've got about 190,000 out there. Um, and, you know, we're just about to launch the new cube that is now going to be known as the Cube 855. That is a 4K encoder that will not only stream, but will also do 4K HDR proxy files with time code on them and then chunk them up to our core account that can then be dropped into an Avid as a file. Okay, so that's another way that we're adding, uh, you know, integration into Media Composer as sources. Absolutely, and, and Media Central too, right? So uh, what Mike was just showing was Media Central Stream. Um, but yes, you're right, we can also then take uh, those same SRT feeds and write an AAF file that could then be ingested with Media Composer for sure. Something else that we're doing a ton of nowadays is not only offset monitoring, because we're very well known for onset monitoring, we're doing offset monitoring with our encoders. Um, but we're also doing offset monitoring for an AVID session. And, I, and I'll give you a, a quick overview of the specific workflow that we've created to support some of the largest post uh, production companies in the world, right? Um, so again, I'll share my desktop here and give you a, a quick walkthrough of how we do that. So this is one of our encoders coming up into the cloud. And what we do is uh, link that encoder into the Avid editing room that wants to receive this feed. So we've assigned this encoder up to this room. I'm gonna now introduce this core TV tab that allows us to take this room and share it via somebody's email or SMS onto an app that we created called Viewer. Viewer has the ability also to see, HDR, see an HDR workflow and 4K workflow, which is becoming more and more popular. 
we can send a feed to the iPad in about 180 milliseconds. And the app can be downloaded on a desktop or uh, an iPhone or an iPad. And it means that someone can have an interaction with the editor from anywhere in the world. Again, this is fully encrypted. Um, you know, this is what the viewer software looks like. As you can see, you can have multiple feeds coming in. So you could see, uh, you know, different avids, different editing sessions. And then we have a lot of different tools at the bottom that give us, you know, the ability to switch between different feeds. You know, this That's is excellent. a yeah, it's a free app. People can download it from the app store. And uh, as you know, we, we add a watermark onto those and we can even add a uh, chat and text between different users. So Ray, you and I could be critiquing someone's editing session and chatting between us, right? So, you know, that's become very, very popular recently. And you said that, uh, you know, there are a number of folks who are already taking advantage of this today. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I can't really uh, mention names, but I can say that uh, they are the largest post-production group in the world that are big fans of Media Composer, obviously. Yeah. And, you know, they're based in the US, Canada, London, you know, all over the world, India. I mean, you know, they're, they're an international company. And, you know, we were very happy to design and, and to craft what we're doing, especially from the 4K perspective, uh, in weekly sessions with these guys. So we're, you know, we're really excited and happy about what we're doing. Yeah, same here. I mean, uh, it just again highlights the openness of the Media Central Stream option for folks when it comes to ingesting IP and certainly uh, working with Teradek and being able to basically take in content from pretty much anywhere uh, is, you know, providing a tremendous amount of flexibility for sure. And then on the distribution side for Media Composer output, being able to basically do what our review and approval workflows not just to editors at home, but certainly on mobile devices to be able to do that interactivity that you were mentioning in terms of higher efficiency and delivering content faster for greater collaboration. Yeah, that's that's amazing. And and in order to learn more, John, where should people go? Just teradec.com or? They, well, at firstly, they can email me personally. I am John J. Wen at teradec.com or they can just go to the website, www.teradec.com. Excellent. Well, John, this is fantastic. I want to thank you for being part of this today. Uh, and we're going to bring you back at the end for some questions. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, here we are. We're with Matrox and we're with Wayne. Wayne, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi. Hi, Ray. Hi, Mike. My name is Wayne Andrews. Uh, I'm a product manager at Matrox. Matrox has uh, been in a privately held company since 1976. This year, we're so celebrating our 45th anniversary of innovation. Uh, we provide solutions for OEMs, IT, AV guys, uh, system admins, and end users. That's great, Wayne. So it's good to know uh, more about the company. Why don't you tell us a little bit about some of the devices and then show us a little bit about how they work. Sure. Uh, today, I would like to discuss or introduce the audience to our Monarch Edge series of encoders and decoders. Uh, specifically for this one, we'll, we'll focus in on the, the, uh, the encoder. So it has four channels of I.O. and it's future proof with 2110. Uh, so it has three, uh, three 3Gs and a 12G. Uh, our encoders are timestamp per frame. So for timestamping and for alignment to ensure uh, frame accurate video encoding and decoding. We have 422, 42, 420, 8-bit and 10-bit, and we can go up to 120 megabits per stream in the encoding. And wow. they're gen lockable. Our encoders and de decoders are gen lockable. We support RTMP, RTSP, MPEG-2 and SRT. Um, we have measured glass to glass on a, uh, on a lossless network in MPEG-2. Uh, 100 milliseconds. Um, obviously, when you go over a, a, a lossy network, you have to put in uh, redundancies, if you will, with packet transfers and stuff like that. So round trip time, you would have to adjust that for SRT, as we all know, as open standard protocol. So looking anywhere between 100 to 
500 milliseconds. So I mentioned we have four spigots, three of them are 3G and one is 12G, gen lockable. We have a stereo balance to go into a soundboard or that same uh, uh, interface can be used for talkback between an encoder and decoder. We have tally, uh, we have redundant LANs built into the box. Uh, so you can have control in media or to hit two uh, media uh, destinations. Um, future proofed with 2110 and two SSPs on it, and it's low power consumption, 42 watts. Um, typically, as we all know, in a new world Remy environment, you want to use your key guys of the editors that are now at home, but those same key guys can be editing multiple or producing multiple events sim uh, during the day, during a, a single day. So this is just an example of having remote editors and operators offsite, all the stuff going into the master control room and your, even your talent could be offsite. Do we have an S1, which pro pro provides a return feed. So you can send the return feed to the remote talent and then it comes back. At the same time, simultaneously, the same stadium, not only could be sending it to master control room, but it could be sending it to an on-prem uh, Avid ecosystem, right? So it could be using, um, you know, uh, Media Central or even Media Composer. And with Media Composer, you can actually use our XTO products, which is a KVM, a secure uh, KVM over internet or, or even uh, VPNs to do like Media Composer editing. And then, you know, we have, you know, the, the granddaddy of them all, the cloud, so accessible from anywhere in the world where the, the same guys be cutting, you know, highlight reels or providing assets from not only from cameras that are hard coded or ptz's if you will or even on the shoulder mounts but even other handheld devices or stuff contributing all into this one program that's amazing and so uh you were mentioning you support a number of different protocols but you mentioned of course srt um which is one of the things we wanted to show today so uh do you mind walking us through sort of setting up the Monarch to send SRT? Sure, sure. So um, I'm already logged into the box. Um, we have, you know, various, various men, uh, menus. And by the way, the viewers that are seeing this, this is either just released or days out from releasing. This is a brand new feature in our upcoming release. So on the top of the thing, you, know, you can see we have uh, our four 1080i inputs here for since we're broadcasting centric, if you will, uh, focused on this uh, thing. One one thing to note that our interlace comes in interlaced. It's encoded interlaced, transported interlaced, and decoded interlaced. So it's pristine, pristine interlaced quality. And it's as simple as adding a process, which I had previously done, and then I can add an encode, which is done, and now I can just add streams. So I want to add an SRT stream. I click on SRT, I'm gonna just set it up to listener so Mike can uh, call it. And I'm just gonna put in uh, the, the uh, IP address of this box, uh, 75, apply it. And then Mike should be now getting the signal uh, once he calls it. Mike, are you getting uh, the SRT signal? Well, let's take a look. So with... Uh information that Wayne has provided. I route my matrix, mouse over, boom, that quick. Wow. So that's how quickly and easily I'm ingesting from the matrix encoder. Okay, Wayne, so what uh, do people do if they wanna learn more about what you just showed? Well, uh, they can go to matrix.com uh, forward slash video, and then they can look into the Monarch Edge series. Um, if they're interested in the KVM, it's an XTO3 series. And if they just have questions or whatever, they can just reach out to the broadcast media group, DMG at matrox.com. Fantastic. Wayne, thank you so much for doing this today. We really appreciate it. And Wayne will be back at the end to answer some questions. Thank you so much, gentlemen. It was my pleasure. Now we're here with Zixi, and specifically, we have Eric Bolton. And Paul Shore from Zixi. Eric, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Thank you, Ray. Pleasure to be here with uh, good friends from Avid. I'm Eric Bolton, Vice President of Business Development, uh, and pleased to be working and working with Avid in this work. Excellent. Thanks. And Paul? 
Well, thanks, Ray. Thanks, Eric. Um, Paul Shaw, Senior Solutions Architect at Zixi. So, Eric, I think it makes sense uh, to sort of introduce uh, Zixi for folks who may not be familiar and really just talk about, you know, what is Zixi and, and, and sort of what is the platform? So take it away. Happy to do so, Ray. So Zixi is a company that has been singularly focused on one thing over a decade and a half, and that is live broadcast quality video over IP and any IP and at true scale. And we have been dedicated on this. We pioneered bringing broadcast quality video to the open internet, AKA unmanaged networks. Um, and we have continued to develop and drive and pioneer within the industry. Zixi's main product set in our market offering is a software defined video platform. Our primary customers who consume this are the world's largest media companies, but that is in concert with the ecosystem that supports them. That is OTT broadcast services, that is large scale telco services, and all the various work, chain, work and supply chain people that live in that from live editing to ad insertion and all the way down to the edge devices, which is encode and decode. We are a live streaming platform, so it is either live events, occasional use, or live linear 24 by seven channels. Zixi functions across any IP network, so that can be public cloud, private cloud, on-premise, any, any particular hybrid that one may put together. We support 17 different protocols, which we will continue to say because we're firm believers in interoperability. We support all of the different cloud uh, providers in their many forms and stripes, and we support every edge device that we can pretty much point to in our broadcast market space. Zixi enables the largest global ecosystem in the world. We have well over 100,000 instances in the market in 100 countries. You can see that 700 customers in the, in the uh, logos that have been put there have all worked uh, on the Zixi platform. And in our technology partner ecosystem, which continues to grow 300, so you won't have to worry about which decision you make. Uh, in terms of your favorite provider in a given solution set. And across this, we introduced the idea of our intelligent data platform. We harvest over 3 billion telemetry data points per day. And we use that in our AI ML um, operations engines to allow people to understand anomaly detection, event correlation, blast radius, and things like that. So what are the components of a software-defined video platform? Well, step one in the basic part is a transport where you have protocols. We Zixi obviously known for our protocol, but we support SRT, which we are doing with you folks. We support RIST, we support NDI, we support HLS, DASH, all of the different elements that allow interoperability between systems and in a given workflow. This is all developed and underpinned by the 140 man years that we have within our platform, which is the video solution stack that allows bonding, that allows hitless failover, multiple sets of configuration for primary and backup, and any number of things that you require in broadcast in streaming television. All of that data flows into our intelligent data platform, which allows you to record and see and detect things that humans can't and allow your operators and engineers to work in concert for faster root cause analysis and better quality of service. And ultimately, this is all managed through our control plane, which is Zen Master, the Zix enabled network, which is a SaaS model that sits across and allows this to truly move from tens of hundreds to thousands of different streams in its skin. So that is our quick overview, and we will be telling you more about this as time permits. That's excellent, Eric. Thank you very much. And, and one of the things that uh, I think is important for folks to know is that uh, you can basically treat uh, this interoperability uh, as you would any other contribution uh, point. So this can come from devices that are enabled to send Zixi to say the broadcaster and then ultimately into an avid production environment, or you can actually send directly into an avid production environment. That includes even from uh, mobile devices, cameras, encoders, right? As well as 24 by seven linear channels. So is, that, is that the case? That is absolutely the case and very well said, Mr. Thompson. All right, thanks, Eric, appreciate that. Uh, Paul, why don't we go ahead and show folks how to set this up and do contribution into Media Central Stream. Uh, great, thanks, Ray. Uh, okay, hi everyone. Um, so what we have here is I'm just going to walk through a, 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 con a configuration of uh, Zixi Zen Master running across the top of uh, a broadcaster, Zixi broadcaster that's delivering uh, delivering a feed via SRT into uh, media, Avid Media Central. 
So here's just a, a quick diagram showing our actual uh, contribution inside network with the camera feed, or it could be a playout feed or any kind of video uh, encoder uh, delivering into a broadcaster. The broadcaster is then going to hand over SRT into Avid Media Central. Uh, we support uh, 17 different protocols. In this case, we use an SRT, but it could be a, a RIST or Zixi or RTMP or any of those other things. Um, over the top of that, we have Zixi's Zen Master, which is a cloud-based SaaS monitoring and um, a, a, a tool for uh, configuration uh, and alerts and that kind of thing to, to, to oversee the, the deployment from, from any location. So we can have a remote op operator that's either in a, a data center or home user or someone on site able to uh, monitor the feed uh, and make sure that the delivery is, is arriving in Media Central as expected. <clears throat> so Paul, that means that anybody can basically be monitoring any of the incoming feeds through Zen Master on any mobile device or a VLC player, basically. Exactly. We have plugins for sort of iOS and Android, VLC, that kind of thing, browser. Uh, and obviously, we have things like um, permission-based access controls around that as well. So you could have uh, access controls that are specific to uh, a location or a production or a different facility uh, or even different edit rooms and that kind of thing. So people can log in and look at a feed and monitor a feed that they have access to, but would obviously be uh, limited uh, and not able to see fields, the, the feeds that are outside of their uh, visibility. <clears throat> yep. Okay, so how does that look in, uh, in Zen Master? So, um, so as I said, we have a broadcaster uh, which is the Zixi sort of software platform node. Um, that is a piece of software that can either run in a virtualized environment or on, uh, on a piece of hardware. Uh, we also have plugins for feeders and receivers and things like that that can live inside encoders, uh, inside IRDs. Um, but it is essentially a Zixi node in the network. Uh, and I can see here uh, that that node is presented to me in the Zen Master interface. Uh, and what I'm able to do is, is both monitor and access that node. So I can track metrics about it here, for example, like I can see the IP address that it's, uh, it's reporting from. I can see the number of streams that are running across it, things like uptime metrics, like its CPU and RAM usage. In fact, if I <clears throat> uh, click on the broadcaster itself, it'll pull up some more information about it. <clears throat> I can see my configuration amount, uh, information licenses, software versions, what kind of uh, hardware or instance type it's running on, uh, that kind of thing. And we also track both these metrics in real time and, and log them over time. So I'm able to see how the CPU has performed or the network has performed, for example, over the, over the course of the last day or the last week or the entire production uh, or whatever it is, network statistics, configurations, and that kind of thing. So moving along, how is that configured then across the top of my infrastructure? Well, my infrastructure is quite uh, small here. Uh, Zen Master can run hundreds of uh, nodes and thousands of uh, streams at any one time. But in this case, we just have a single broadcaster with a feed that is coming in to that broadcaster and then being delivered further downstream uh, using a channel to um, Media Central. So our configuration is, is, is fairly straightforward and it looks like this. So a source coming into a broadcaster and a channel that's, uh, that's delivering to my final target. So we can see that in a, in a, in a visual way, in a detailed way. Uh, and obviously everything here is, is nice and green, but if there was something like a bandwidth issue uh, or something even inside the content like freeze frames or audio issues, uh, we would have components here that would alert us to that, maybe going into an amber or a red state. Uh, and each of these components has click-throughs where I can click through uh, and get to uh, the specific object and, and troubleshoot that kind of thing. Um, but from a, just a straight up monitoring, whether it's in a knock or in my edit uh, day or whatever, I can just monitor that feed coming in from our side. Uh, and here you can see I have uh, thumbnails updating, I have technical spec information about the stream. I can look inside the PIDs and make sure that I'm really getting uh, the type of feed that I'm expecting, whether it has you know, maybe multiple audio channels as expected, or maybe it might have things like captions information and that as expected as well. Uh, and I can, I can look into those stream metrics here from, from this interface. Uh, we also 
track things like you know, resolution and bitrate and that kind of thing, as well as just like in the way that we track metrics on the, uh, on the broadcaster level, we also track, uh, track same metrics about the stream itself. So I can th see things like the actual bit rates, bit rates of the individual PIDs within the, the full transport stream, um, metrics about the network delivery, packets that have been sent, packets that were dropped and recovered or unrecovered, that kind of thing. Uh, and, and we can see it's all tracked over time. So I can look at it right now, troubleshoot events as they're happening right now, or go back and look in time and see how things performed over the, over the course of the production. How does that look under the hood? Well, here we have the actual broadcaster software itself. Then Master allows me to um, <clears throat> route through the encrypted uh, secure backbone and, and, and log into the broadcaster that's on site. And I can see that I have uh, my output put feed here, which in this case happens to be an SRT output, and it is being delivered to, to uh, the Avid Media Central ingest point. Uh, I can see where it's going, the IP address and the port that it's going to bitrate, the uptime, um, and some other things like latency about it as well. Uh, and that information is, is shown displayed down here as, at the same time. So you could set, you could set the uh, latency budget, right, Paul? Yeah, latency is a configurable uh, configurable setting. So obviously, if you were using a network that um, maybe wasn't robust enough to handle a low latency, you could sort of manually increase that uh, just to kind of uh, help you get a delivery out of a remote site or that kind of thing. That's excellent. Thanks, Paul. So Mike, you want to just show what that looks like on the Media Central stream side? And while you're pulling that up, what Mike uh, is going to show you is the fact that now you can do contribution either from really any uh, Zixi enabled device sending SRT directly either into uh, Media Central Stream uh, or you can go through the broadcaster uh, and the broadcaster can then also send that. And that's true for both live contribution from out in the field to support either news contribution or certainly remote live production, but also it includes sending 24 by 7 linear channels over IP as well. All right. Thank you all. First of all, we appreciate everyone's participation here. Of course, this is a community event. And so thanks to the community at large. Uh, I'm going to spend, <laughs> this is going to be Media Central Stream Overview in two minutes or less. So I'm going to go super fast here. Please ask questions. We have people ready to field them as I talk as quickly as I can. Uh, a couple of things. This is the Media Central Stream application. It's running on a VM in my infrastructure. It could run in Azure as well um and others coming it is based on our video engine technology so this is tried and true for us we've used this before uh it is the basis of our faster playout engine for example and um, a lot of stuff for those who are familiar a lot of things here will be equally familiar uh notice i'm just going to show you real quick i am mounted on my nexus the nexus client is embedded within the application um, and I'm using NTP here, uh, and uh, so everything is should be familiar and and standard and and not in any way, shape, or form daunting or or confusing to anyone. We do have telemetry, so I can see memory use, RAM use, uh, uh, decoding CPU use, that sort of thing. Okay, so but again, I'm going very quickly here. So the system is based around templates there's routing templates and there's ingest job templates okay a routing template can be as simple as a url and you see i have several of them here um so i'll randomly pick jared's uh it's an ip address and it's a port we typically prefer to be caller mode for those who are familiar with such things in srt caller it's not transmitter or receiver it's the initiator of the connection. We prefer to be caller in that we're generally on the inside of a facility or directly connected to storage at the very least. Um, that means we reach out. That means no, no open IP addresses, no publicly available IPs. Um, I define upon which port I'm consuming this feed, but we initiate the connection. This is for security concerns. That's why we prefer this. Uh, you can lock the stuff down with user password, passphrase kinds of things. Note that typically these things are one to one. If I'm consuming this stream, no one else can. The transmitter will reject it. 
So if I'm seeing it, that means, I mean, obviously there are ways around that and there are cloud routing systems and, and abilities that let you do one to many, but typically it's one to one. Okay, so to apply the routing template is I select my channel. I already have this one routed, but I'll just show you how it works. Uh, but I scroll my list. Here's the TVU thing that I had previously configured. I can, of course, look at the parameters here. I hit route, it's already routed, so you won't see anything here. Um, it is now consuming that feed. You mouse over and see some uh, statistics on what's going on. Uh, I will then do an ingest job and I'm going as quickly as I can here. So these again are predefined and configurable. Uh, so I made a TVU one by way of example here earlier and it defines a bunch of things about the job. First, and pro probably most importantly, we're taking the SRT, the H264, H265 essence, enclosed within the SRT. We're decoding it to raw frames. We're storing those frames in RAM temporarily, then we re-encode it as a happy editable format, edit while capture format, I should say. So that means we can do frame rate conversion on the fly, raster size conversion on the fly. Those sorts of things are possible because of that architecture. Uh, I defined some various things in my ingest template here, my path, I happen to be mounted at the root of my Nexus. I can therefore see all of the workspaces on my Nexus. If I had chosen to mount lower at that level, I would only see the stuff within that folder. And of course, I am an authorized user, so I only see the things that are relevant to me that I am authorized to write to. Um, we are AVID, so we do support the AVID Media Files MXF something path. That's not a necessary condition, by the way, but it is a supported condition. So I check the box, it gives me the default path. I define the folder into which I wanna write. I define the name. Notice as I mouse over, there's a bunch of wild cards here. Um, so I can do $D, $T for date time. I can do free text. And then I have a check-in location. So this system is connected to production management, our Media Central Cloud UX. Okay, I'm gonna keep going while I talk here. Um, and I'm going to call up that template I just looked at, and I'm going to say, thank you very much, and record. If I could scroll down. Very good. Um, so I can check into a production asset management system, but again, that is not a necessary condition. I can do a standalone thing. I can do a standalone thing to Media Composer. I could do a standalone thing to an Adobe Premiere. Um, any of those things are possible. The, again, production asset management is supported, but not a necessary condition. So notice I made another one here for Sony. Uh, let's grab something else here. This one. Likewise, grab this one. And I'm watching the clock here. Okay, so that, those are connecting. While they do that, I'll just begin the record job. Um, the plus here begins the record job. If I hit the red button, it's a crash record and it just uses a, a predefined template, which I can show you probably at some other time since I don't have time now. Uh, I'm logging into my Cloud UX system just to see the results of this. Uh, this again, may or may not be familiar territory. Um, but it's fairly self-evident. I'm checking into a location called Projects Stream. So I click here. At the top are the two edit while capture. The little folded over film strip indicates an edit while capture asset. I click, I load, I use as any edit while capture asset. Likewise, by the way, just to, to finish the thought, it's available in Media Composer. This is likewise available in Premiere. Um, and it's two o'clock, so I've talked as fast as I can. Uh, Ray, you want to wrap this and, and point people to a place for more info? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, first, I want to thank uh, everybody for being a part of this today. As Mike says, this is a community event, and we really appreciate uh, everybody participating today. Good news is this is recorded. I, I know we jammed quite a bit into this session, but you will get the recording of this um, if you did sign up for the webinar, and so you'll be able to watch uh, this over again, because I know that there was, again, a lot of information conveyed 
in this session today. We will try and do deeper dives uh, as we go forth um, with each one of these partners um, as well. And uh, I know we're out of time, so unfortunately we can't uh, answer too many questions, but there is one here that someone asked about whether or not uh, Teradek and Teradex Core is an app that's inside of MCUX. And no, the answer is no, that is not uh, part of MCUX today. Um, but uh, you can send SRT from Core into either Media Central Stream, or you can go right out of a cube, right, a Teradek cube and directly into uh, Media Central Stream via SRT. Um, and so that was part of what we showed today. Um, so good question. Thank you, Alexis. Um, and then, uh, like I said, we will send the recording around and, uh, I just really want to say thanks to the partners and thanks to everyone for participating today. Mike, great job. And uh, we'll end it there today. And like I said, we'll send you guys the recording. So thank you all. And uh, we'll talk again soon.